All right, everybody. I just started recording. Welcome to the Content Routing Workgroup, edition number seven. Uh, everybody's favorite event every two weeks. <laughs> Let me share my screen and we'll take a look. Um, so for those of you here, I'm going to take a bit um, of an opportunity here to um, potentially divert from our normal uh, routine and take a look at what the long-term planning um, is going to look like for the content routing work group, what we're attempting to collectively accomplish as a group. I think I've kind of heard from um, several members of the team in many cases that we're not sure how to potentially prioritize some of this work against other work that we're doing. And so what I'm attempting to accomplish by putting together a roadmap is to establish some collective goals for the cross-functional team so that you can try to apply that perspective towards whatever prioritization and activities you have in place. That way we can draw some lines in the sand and hopefully it'll help. Um, with that difficult task that I think most of you have with attempting to uh, manage priorities. So I put together this content routing work streams. This is actually, uh, I've built an entire kind of task tracking, board view making um, system here, a little bit of a framework in uh, Notion that should give us views that we can use to kind of isolate for specific teams or for priority, all this kind of stuff. Don't worry about any of that. And in fact, there isn't much expectation that you update this either. Uh, it'll be a group exercise to go through this together. Um, the important one that I'd like to draw everyone's attention to that I'll drop in the notes and then drop in Slack later is uh, this page, which is the content routing work streams. Torfin, sorry. What I can see is IPNI objective summary page. I think what you want to show is a different one. Oh, yeah, that's the wrong screen we're sharing. Too many desktop. Or not enough desktops. Yeah, that's the, that looks like the right one for me. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Masi. You're muted, Torfin. Man, I don't even know how that automatically happened when I shared the screen. Um, thanks, Will. <laughs> Between the mute, the shared screen, we're off to a banging start today. Um, and here are today's notes um, and agenda. Dropping the link in the chat. Um, I went ahead and uh, kind of started with the IPNI update. So um, I'll run through these. And Masi, if you want to add anything for the group, go ahead and please feel free. Um, we are currently in progress with our double hashing ingestion. So we've got uh, DH store, which is our double hash store that we're ingesting the index into. Um, we ran into a few hiccups, but we expect to complete the ingestion process probably within the next week of the entire index. And this page that I linked here um, is some metrics that uh, Ivan has expertly crafted to uh, kind of show you what the status of this ingestion is versus the indexers that uh, we're ingesting all of these uh, advertisement chains from. Um, and then, We've been helping the Lassie team. Um, so they had um, some metrics ingestions themselves, which we've uh, kind of optimized to reduce overhead this last week. Um, it, it's a very high volume process. Um, there's a lot of queries going across. Uh, and so optimizing that was, was a very high, um, high benefit 
uh, activity that Mossy contributed to this last week. And then um, I guess uh, I noted here that the uh, double hash store is expected to wrap up at the end of early next week. I think um, that's probably kind of from a high level important areas that we've been working on. We've also got um, some of the scalability uh, items that we're working on right now, which are to uh, support the ability to export car files and to bootstrap index instances from those car files to S3 instances. Um, and uh, fun note, those will be defaulting to GZIP for anybody concerned. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and uh, pass the torch um, Guy, I see you had a few items up. Did you want to jump in for us? Yeah, sure. So on my side, I'd like to thank everyone that gave a review for the double hashing DHT spec. So in particular, Massey, Ivan, and Joropo that have been quite active last week. So thanks a lot. And so we can say now that the spec is locked. Um, means that we can still change it. So I'll go ahead with the implementation and probably I'll need to adjust some details but uh, we're gonna stick to this concept that we have now. And uh, I'll carry on with the implementation work um, probably in the coming days. And on the other side, maybe that's a topic to keep for later for a discussion I've been planning around um, changing the uh, content router reprovide operation. But yeah, maybe let's keep it for for, for later topic. Yeah, we can we can throw that into our uh, discussion about uh, road mapping for the group. That's that's a great uh, contribution for that. Yep. And then um, it looks like I don't see Gus today. Hope he's feeling all right. Um, Adine, did you have any updates you wanted to pass our way? I know you've been really focused on the. Um, Lassie support recently, but if you're aware of um, any updates that are important for the group from the IPFS side. Um, no, nothing, nothing particularly from my side. I've just been following along with uh, what the rest of you have been up to and, you know, commenting where I can. A lot um, to follow I, I, I do, I do, I just want to flag that, like, I, I suspect we're going to start getting questions. So, like, Yesterday, uh, yesterday it's hard for you. You posted about the metadata, um, you know, people trying to basically like build IPFS searching tools across all the stuff that's there. And I, I wonder if we're going to start getting questions where like the SPs are wanting to make their data searchable in a lot of cases, and they have lots of data, which we're then double hashing to protect on or on or then double hashing to protect for some privacy, but then also exposing all the clear text CIDs. So it's like even with even with writer privacy, you, you're still gonna end up with most of the data being discoverable. But we're not getting to writer privacy yet. Right. My, my point though is like the answer to some of the questions around. This reader privacy isn't really reader privacy because I could always adjust it twice has been, but we'll cover that with writer privacy. But like, that's not gonna really fix it either. Right? I'm not saying we need to have, I'm not saying like we shouldn't do it or anything. I'm just saying, I think we need to have an answer because that question's gonna come up. I think from, from the, 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 your anonymity set isn't the full set of SIDs because some SIDs, some some publishers will choose to reveal what SIDs they have. It's, well, it's, yeah, some publishers will choose to reveal what SIDs they have, but also just like the set of CIDs that are commonly, that are commonly used will show up in a search engine somewhere. And you could just use those. And if it happens to be that the same entity decides to both run a search, a search engine index and a IPNI index, then they can use the one to defeat the other one. Yeah, so I mean, this is the same thing as like re-identification risk, right? 
there's an external data set that you can use to re-identify outside of the system. Yep. And I, and I don't know what the percentages are going to come through for like, you know, file coin data versus otherwise, right? I mean, different groups are going to have different constraints, but uh, I think it would be interesting to know if a large amount of this data, if, if a lot of the data that we're doing extra processing work on is data we don't need to because the SPs are going to like expose it all anyway, or if that's not the case, right? For example, if we've been telling people that they shouldn't be sending their data to IPNI if the data is supposed to be private and encrypted, you know, and have ACLs. And those are the only people who aren't making their data available for search. Well, then, then IPNI isn't ingesting any data that actually need, that's actually going to be kept private. So we might want to decide to be flexible on like one of those two dimensions. I mean, I, Sure. Yeah, we can we can definitely burrow into this. I think um, it's it's a good topic, but um, I was under the impression that the advantage of encrypting all these SIDs would enable you to leverage the indexer without exposing who's reading those SIDs. So is it is it knowing the locations that of the data and being able to address that content that's problematic? Or is it actually just obscuring um, who's accessing it? Which we we still gain in this case, don't we? Or am I miss it, it depends it depends a lot on on the specific scenarios and we don't have particular percentages, but there's some case where you've got a SID that's just on some IPFS node that only has a double hashed. And so that SID only ever appears double hashed and then and is in sort of an ACL like situation. And there you get, you know, reader privacy in that no one else knows the pre-image SID. And so no one can see, you know, what's happening. There's cases where that SID is in a public data set. And so a storage provider chooses to also release it publicly. And so then, you know, some malicious actor could take the set of the public databases, double hash the SID that they find publicly and know what the double hash version of that SID looks like. And then they could look at the query and correlate it against that. So, you know, there, there, there's different adversary models and there's different scenarios segmenting the data queries um, and we can come up with a more specific threat model I think is probably the yeah. most uh, direct thing is that uh, that's yeah that's I think so point. like what we have we have slightly different threat models for the double hash DHT proposal and for the IPNI double hashing right because the the DHT one is doing um, K anonymity as well yeah. So uh, I'd say then the privacy, so the privacy, the reader privacy depends on the secrecy of the seed that is being accessed. So if you're accessing a seed that is very public, you won't have any privacy in general or just the K anonymity uh, for the DHT. But if you're accessing a private CID, then you will get reader privacy. Yeah, so I think the emphasis on threat models is really important here because privacy is this really wide spectrum, you know. Um, so if we document the list of the threat models that we're defending against with the existing proposal and the DHT double hashing, that would be helpful. On the differences between DHT and IP and I, uh, be more than happy to at least capture an issue on uh, exposing K anonymity. I think with the double hash advertisements, sorry, with the double hash information, providing that from IP and I perspective is, I don't, I don't see any issues providing. Uh, going back to adding the initial concern in terms of further protection, uh, do you think it's worth capturing an item on 
talking about potential solutions to it? Or or do you think that is something we could postpone for later, Adin? Yeah, I think I think you know postponing the, the solutions for later. I guess I'm just thinking like, you know, we're going to be presenting some stuff in Brussels in like a month and a half or something, and mm -hmm. and trying to get us you know prepared for the for the questions that are going to be coming our way um, from people who have been like you know who are just going to be coming at this from the outside and like a little less clued in, or they're coming at it from different perspectives because these are some things that like. You have been talked about before, like double hashing something that's been done in Hypercore. And so when Hypercore released that, there was a whole bunch of discussion in the community around should or should we, shouldn't we? And now we're doing it. And so you're going to hit all those questions again. So I guess this is more of just like, a, you know, when you're building your slides and you're doing all that to be like prepared because these questions are coming. Yep, that's a really good point. Who is the track lead for privacy track in IPFS thing? Because I wonder if we could put up some just ideas or something, get you know, community traction, just get a sense of would people find the existing double hashing useful and what, what's on the wish list here, you know? Would that be helpful? Well, did you, I feel like you, did you nominate Massey for that? I feel like I saw you nominating him for that on one of the channels or maybe it was for I, I don't. Else. I don't know if we have a specific privacy track at the moment. I think we've got a content routing track um we we can take a look at, at how things are set up i think we've got one for content routing and another one for like measurement stuff i don't know if we've got a specific day or half day of talks around privacy but we could certainly either do a working group thing uh i think i i mean i guess the other one right uh to remember is that this ipfs thing is much more for current implementers closer to the community it's not a it's not as much a presenting outwards um, so I, I don't know if I'm expecting too much more scrutiny of the double hashing than what we've already gotten from the immediate audience. I think we can, we can take an action item for threat modeling. I think starting with that known place of like, this is what we're trying to solve for versus this is, you know, what we probably won't be solving for with this exercise. It helps to really shape the conversation that we continue to have and uh, realign people's kind of goals and intentions around it. Um, it it'll make things a lot easier to approach. Um, Adina, I really appreciate you bringing that up. I think it's a it's a very important point. I also think it's one that we can we can lock down. Um, it's definitely something that we can do. Um, it, it's important to think about. I wondered if we could um, jump over to the uh, Bifrost team and, and just get an update. Cameron, I, I've actually put down in some of our top topics. Um, there's a few items I wanted to check on, mostly curious about the state of the rollout and um, whether or not um, the delegated routing made it out to um, the nodes and uh, this kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's unfortunately not a lot to update on that. We were trying to roll that out now, I think, for the, I don't know, maybe third time. And we hit another blocker. Um, it was in, was it 18 one? Um, had a, a panic um, bug that we hit and we had to roll this back. Okay. Um, so I think Gus is looking at that currently. And it looks, if I followed the conversations right, it looks like they're trying to target the fix for that in 019. But from what I understand, we took the first release candidate of that and ran it on the um, one of our staging clusters the other day as well, and also didn't get some good feedback on that. But maybe maybe the issues we encountered can get um, squashed before the release and make it out still. Yeah, the the short version on the panic is that um, it looks like in the refactor to do to expose sort of all of the routers equally instead of like DHT plus like there's the DHT stuff and then there's the delegated routing stuff. Uh, there's some typecasting things that got stuck in the middle where like you actually do want to do things that are explicitly DHT operations and not generic router operations. Um, and those weren't getting exposed properly. Uh, which is are needed for the preload nodes. They're not needed for 
most things, but the preload nodes require them. Um, so, and I guess Massey, as, a, as an FYI, to some extent, this, the function that's causing the problems here with the preload nodes is effectively outsourcing the routing table to somebody else, uh, which is the thing that you've been hacking on for Rhea, which is like the IPFS DHT query command, which is you just outsource the who are my 20 closest peers to somebody else, and then you do the work. Um, That's good feedback. Um, Cameron, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. I think this work group is a good place to kind of surface what's going on with it and whether or not we need to um, throw support at it. I think uh, we're all behind kind of getting this, this rollout done. Um, I, th <laughs> I think it's, there's a lot of uh, functionality that uh, we're, we're dependent on, uh, I think actually to, to get these rollouts done. So it, it's a big priority, but I know the Bifrost team is very much in the weeds right now, supporting uh, also Lassie um, or uh, Rhea rollout. So we appreciate all y'all's hard work. And uh, if there are, um, speaking with, I think Mario's maybe out right now, right? But um, if Mario or George or uh, anyone needs help with specific issues we can wrestle with, I think we might want to consider lending that help uh, to ensure that this actually gets done. I think it's a really high priority. Yeah, definitely. M much appreciated. Um, yeah, Mario is out at the moment, but George is looking after things mostly in his absence. And um, yeah, we'll let you know. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're a little tight on time. I'm gonna just plug two items real quickly to uh, ensure that everyone's aware of them. And then I'm gonna jump over to this roadmap review so that we can get as much of that uh, concentration of discussion out of the way. Cause it's one of those things that will potentially draw and be on just the scope of this meeting. But um, one, Mossy and I met with Cloudflare last week. Um, we had a really great meeting with their team. Um, they intend to incorporate in their roadmap um, the a, an instance of the network indexer um, that they plan to use over the second half of the year. Um, that said, um, we're kind of discussing with them. Uh, they're very interested in our uh, reader privacy efforts. And so we'd potentially like to talk to them about how they can participate in testing. Uh, we'd like to get a little bit more engagement from their team and support and um, kind of the decisions for network design that we're making over here. Uh, they have a lot of uh, valuable feedback to offer. And in response to that, they're particularly interested in some of the pathways that we're taking with uh, IPNS and um, what we uh, intend to um, accomplish with that. And I, I think they've run into a lot of similar problems with DNS and they, um, they're they very interested in lending their expertise and how they've um, kind of wrestled with these decisions to ensure that we have a smooth um, incorporation process as we move forward with IPNS. And the other item I just briefly want to mention, Caro is here with us right now. Uh, Caro, don't worry, I'm put, not putting you on the spot right now, <laughs> but uh, her... Her team has this um, uh, kind of a, a car work group where they want to um, basically they want to index um, data and make for human readable searches of uh, our network so that you can more easily find files. <clears throat> we'll jump into that. We've already kind of started the conversation in Slack. I just wanted to call it out. Um, if we have time after this kind of roadmap review type of discussion, um, we can take another deeper look. Um, but uh, I'd recommend just taking a quick look at what it is they're attempting to accomplish. Caro and I reviewed last night. I think that there's actually just kind of a clear defining line between the scope of efforts between these groups. Um, however, what they do and the direction that they end up ultimately taking uh, will probably result in some dependency on the work that we do. So we'll want to look at that a little bit more, but 
Uh, the immediate term is just to drive awareness of what it is that they're hoping to accomplish over there. Yeah, that thanks, Torben. I'm actually going to put myself on the spot because I, I need to leave in three minutes. Yeah. Um, hey, all. My name is Cairo. I work on the data programs team. I just wanted to give a very quick overview of what I'm driving, the effort I'm driving, uh, which is, I think, uh, one step before what this working group is focused on. Um, I am going to drive a working group that's focused on getting metadata uh, around public data sets. So that is, you know, what, what's the author of the data set, what's the topic, what's the title of the data set, uh, and, and also the CIDs, if the data set is large, uh, where what, what's the set of CIDs uh, that, that are stored on the network. Uh, so Tofen and I did talk about it yesterday. There's minimal overlap between the two efforts, but uh, we, we must you know, work together in the future to ensure that the end-to-end -end flow for data retrieval is, is uh, frictionless. Uh, so with that, I'm, I'm going to uh, just leave it as that for now. Let me know if there's any questions. You can find me on Slack at C-A-R-O. Thanks. Thanks, Carol. All right, and I'm dropping the link here in the notes so that y'all can take a look at her presentation. It's pretty well done and makes it fairly clear what it is that they're attempting to do. And then additionally, there's a conversation that I started in the um, content routing workgroup Slack that uh, you can take a look at to see what this is all about. All right, I'm jumping over to the roadmap. Um, I will preface this conversation with there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. I've got about a dozen tables with a whole bunch of roll-ups, things like that. Don't waste your time trying to figure out what I'm doing here. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. And the goal will be to make views that uh, essentially ensure that everybody has a very pretty picture of what specifically uh, is for them to worry about and not uh, other folks. The one thing I do want you to take a look at, however, more immediately, these two top items are where you're going to be interested. Um, the tasks page is explicitly stuff that we're actually currently doing. This is things that are in flight presently. Um, you don't need to worry about this. I'm not going to ask anybody here to go through and update any of these or anything like that. I'm going to put this all together. And the goal of this is for us to have a very clear roadmap that comes out of the exercise so that you all have kind of a more clear picture of how the work that we're doing aligns. Um, not that you go in here and provide updates every week. We can gather that through the content routing work group. So this isn't a micromanagement effort, I assure you. <laughs> um, the content routing work streams is at a higher level, something like epics. Like this is work that potentially crosses multiple teams. Uh, and collectively completing this series of tasks uh, accomplishes uh, a goal that we're all kind of working towards. Whether or not all of these goals are accurate or um, really should be even a priority we're thinking about, or for that matter, near term, something potentially um, we don't even get to till the end of the year, right? This is a, a long tail work stream. Um, these work streams intend to identify, like, why are we actually doing these things? And um, it, kind of an effort to justify and challenge ourselves with, is this collectively what we want to accomplish? And secondarily, why are we doing it? What is the impact going to be on the end users as, as we focus our efforts on accomplishing these things? I'm going to read through these real quick. Um, and anybody that wants to drop comment in the why, uh, please feel free, but we can also go through those together. Um, and likewise, I'd also encourage if you suspect that there's a work stream that you see on the future path for content routing as a whole, this is kind of a brainstorming session. So feel free to drop them in here. Um, we'll take all the content and we'll chisel it down to something very articulated, but if you have ideas, throw them in here. This is where you can surface this work stream to the group and get everybody's feedback on whether or not this is a valuable thing to focus our time on collectively. Um, I'll do all the legwork on the tail end, 
of making the associations between the work we're actually doing and kind of this collective effort. Um, so starting with uh, double hashing for reader privacy, this is an aggregate effort of the DHT, the migration of the DHT, uh, the IPNI reader privacy efforts, the migration of the index, all of these things. And um, I, I put this comment down that why we're doing this is to secure usability of IPFS readers by shielding them from outside surveillance of their queries to look up the location of files. Uh, that was the highest level of summary I could kind of come up with. Um, is there is there anything anybody would like to like kind of add to that or uh, an even more acute summary that's possible? If not, we can jump to the next one. And also, you can totally drop comments in here. We don't have to on the spot it either. Um, <clears throat> I tried for the life of me, Masi, to think of um, the true benefit we get from delegated IPNS records. I'll, I'll spit it out here, uh, what I think. Um, I, I think this is an extensibility uh, of being able to um, incorporate searches from external name resolution services um, via a handy API that kind of makes us protocol agnostic. I, I found myself trying to write that in a sentence and I wasn't succeeding too much. Did, do you have a sentence that immediately jumps to mind for, for this effort? So for me, the clue is in the name, you know, that the, we want to be able to use other services to resolve arbitrary strings to sits, you know. Uh, right now, this is all locked into, uh, I think, DHT uh, APIs. Uh, the, it, it is inevitable that we're moving towards a world where there will be alternative naming systems. Ideally, we want to make those changes graceful and iterative and so on. So the first step is to just provide an API that we can swap implementation of. And that's the idea behind the delegated IPNS records. We already have a set of HTTP APIs provided kindly by the IPFS stewards to do exactly that, delegation of services. Uh, I, names, name system is just another service there, right? It would be more things like peer discovery, uh, put records. This also enables us to experiment with uh, alternative implementations on, for example, Cloudflare side. You know, so you could just say, yep, you can write your own naming resolution system. As long as this is the API, we can hook it up to whatever service and start experimenting. It just reduces barrier for uh, interoperability, in my opinion. I also want to flag a little, just because you mentioned the alternative naming systems that you can also do this with DNS. So the other, the way that we've been getting people, because you, you generally need some way to like describe the fact that you're using a different naming system. So the way we've been pointing people to do this is if you're like, you support ENS, what about rando chain NS? The answer is like, <laughs> use use DNS, put in an endpoint, put it here. If you know, in your implementation, you could decide you don't need the endpoint and you could just have code that does it um, instead, you know, depending on if that's feasible for your implementation. And for the sake of like everybody's perspective here, um, Adin, I'm, I'm took note of that. Um, the so this this roadmap what what I intend to do with this is for some of these efforts there's going to be um, kind of technical design docs associated with them I think you know who who owns these work streams um, is you know potentially some of these design docs already exist that kind of stuff some of them won't need uh, design docs potentially there's gonna be a lot of that, but this will be the first step towards kind of categorizing that, talking these things through, and then um, having these deeper conversations in the weeds about like how we execute on some of this stuff. Most of this just goes over to, to GitHub anyway, right? So that we're not uh, 
exiting the workspace where we actually do everything. And I'll just link that stuff back to this page so that it's easy for someone looking from outside the group to find like much more detail about these things. Um, I'll take ownership of that. Um, next up was delegated content routing uh, inputs. And uh, Masi, I'm again interested in your input. I, I, I suspect that um, once writing to the indexer can be performed simply over HTTP, we have broader integration options for easier advertisement ingestion, enabling simple routes to update the indexer and uh, lower. I, I see this as ultimately lowering the overhead um, for the methods of optimizing indexer synchronicity across multiple instances. Um, is that I'm correct? not sure about the I'm not sure about the last bit, but before that I, I agree. And the the general, you know, from systems perspective, this is how it occurs for me. On the IPFS world, we have a capability to ephemerally publish uh, content. Right? On the IPNI side, the, we're on the other side of the spectrum, which is, you tell me you provide something, I'm going to remember that forever until you tell me otherwise. Right? In addition to that. IPNI reach, requires providers to be accessible in, via some network communication because it's IPNI's indexes that reach out to providers. Both systems provide different uh, trade-offs. You know, for example, the reason that IPNI is successful is because it makes bulk advertisement of content much, much easier. You can look at the proportion of the uh, number of sites that are discoverable IPNI network in comparison to DHD. You know, this is why we can like, integrate big providers like NFT storage and uh, Pinata or whatever into, into IPN. But having said that, not, there is a long tail in here, right? There's, there's lots of small providers that don't want to run a, a graph sync server, don't want to run a HTTP server that's accessible, yet they also want to advertise their content through IPNI networks such that it's discoverable, just like the way they're doing on the uh, DHT. To that extent, uh, the effort in providing delegation of put records fits there in that it, again, allows us to swap the implementation of how the put is handled with alternative systems while reducing barrier for interoperability between these two systems. So the um, goal here for me is to um, stick an API in front of the put requests and then swap the implementation so that IP and I can also accept fmr records that are being written to dhd and then later on we can have protocols that allow scalable way by which people can advertise content without having to be accessible through some network right it's a put operation rather than let me tell me where to get it i'll, I'll come get it from you that's comprehensive it's let's let's see let's see what kind of one sentence i can come up with that we'll all have a laugh at it this week <laughs> This is good, Masi. This is good. I think it's a uh, great context and also probably got folks thinking uh, around the call. Um, thank you. Um, delegated routing streaming support. Um, this left me scratching my head. I, I understand why we need uh, streaming as a capability. And I know we kind of, we've talked about um, kind of optimizing streaming, I think, in the long term to, I think, as we support RIA, this is like one, one area that we're kind of approaching. But when, when I say delegated routing, streaming support, does anybody have like, is that a, a scope of effort that we're truly going to attempt to accomplish, say, in the next year? And you know what? What comes to mind? It's like when you basically done already. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so in that perspective, uh, yes, I would say we should accomplish it in the next year. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that Adin says it's done, and I read streaming support as basically ND JSON. That's what that's what we mean. And if so, this is already done. And the rationale on why we need it is because there are operations that are that that could carry on you know in perpetuity 
For example, you could ask a DHT, give me all the results with limit of zero, and it could carry on searching stuff, which could take, I don't know, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, beyond the timeout of the request. If there is no streaming mechanism, you're gonna to have to set a timeout and timeout and things would fail. But if there is a streaming mechanism, you can return results as they are found, which results in much, much better user experience in systems where lookup could have, a complete lookup could make, uh, could take a long time, right? That's why we need it. But TLDR also, is to glue, I think the most obvious thing is like, even if you decided everyone was fast, everyone must complete it under 10 sec. everyone must complete it under like two seconds, right? Uh, what would happen is that if you had, if you tried to glue two systems under a single routing request, then your time would be the maximum of the latencies of the two systems, right? So you would be highly disincentivized to glue anything together because your latencies would always go up. That makes sense. Um, is there, so I was kind of going back through the notes from a few of our other meetings. Is there an optimization effort around that streaming that's in our future? Or is that, is that kind of beyond the scope of like these discussions or something that we would not even consider doing? I'm going to leave it as a no for now. If if you start to think that maybe that is the case, um, let's let's tackle it uh, later. <clears throat> and then I did uh, throw a big fat comprehensive bit swap provider search delay uh, item here. I think I think maybe the scope of bit swap provider search delay is potentially outside the scope of this group, but simultaneously um, we're highly dependent on the artifacts that result from that effort. So I just wanted to get y'all's opinions. You know, is this work stream something we we consider? I mean, it kind of continuously is going to uh, come up. It's, it's not prioritized, um, but it is work that we're going to like try to continue to accomplish with the the members of this team. Um, do we consider that as a uh, as an artifact or a work stream that we're we're focused on with this group? Does that make sense to people? I have thoughts here. Yeah. So the the title of that row. I think we need to adjust that because that doesn't read as an epic to me. I think there's a bigger issue here, which is more epic like, and that is, uh, and I hope folks agree here, which is we want to rely less on bit swap gossip for content routing, right? We don't want to have as, we, want, we don't want to end up with a content routing system that relies on noisiness of bit swap in order to operate, okay? so. It's not. This is not about solving noisiness of BitSwap, but it's, it's more about uh, reducing that reliance so that if BitSwap exists or doesn't exist, contracting would still work. Right? That's the that's the epic for me. Does that make sense? What do you guys think? Yeah, it actually it, it helps to clarify kind of how the group should be looking at this particular work stream that that directly addresses um I, I was looking at this too obtusely i think um it really is kind of the effect that bit swap gossip optimization has on routing that we're we're really interested in and whether or not work that we're doing collectively contributes to you know reducing that reliance um Adin Key, did you have any opinions on this topic specifically? Yeah, so I was just going to post. So uh, Guy posted a thing today about the reprovider sweep, which mostly on board with, but it, it came with the comment of like, oh, yeah, well, we can use this and we'll be able to turn off the bit swap broadcasting. And it's like, that's not, you can't do that because it serves like a bunch of jobs. Um, we can reduce the scope of those jobs to be like the 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 minimum of what is necessary, right? So it's obvious that people don't want to get spammed. So what we want to do is like 
like if, if I could say what the why, like the thing we want to do, like the problem we want to solve is have everything still work and make Infura hate us less. Like that, that would be the, that's the tagline of what we want, right? Um, everything else on how we get there, you know, whatever. Um, but that's, I think, where we want to get to, uh, which is a little different from the provider search delay, which is sort of like, how can we minimize load on the node without breaking stuff? It's two different sides. One's a focus on the server. One's a focus on the client. Um, both good focuses, right? One is, yeah, reduce client load. The other is reduce server load. I think if you reduce server load, you'll make more people happy. Um, and then the client load will sort of fall out from that because the servers will get less load as a function of the clients needing to do less work. Um, We're in the business of making people happy around here. I mean, <laughs> I, I think there's a bigger goal there also, which is we need a, we need a content routing system that works for things like RIA or nodes that aren't online where they've had long lived bit swap swarms already. And so we need a system that's able to function even when there aren't these long lived desktop nodes that have well connected swarms. Um, yeah, right. And I mean, so, so this push of let's not just have a bit swap broadcast as our initial content routing lookup, but equally move towards promoting alternative things like the DHT or or delegated routing. And let's also have a provider push to get more content into those other routing things is, is weaning us off this current dependency on a well-formed bit swap mesh so that we can still have fast and reliable content routing in, in cases like Saturn or whatever, where we're not necessarily having long-lived well-connected bit swap meshes. I guess I would I would counter and say that we are in any case in 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 an event where you are relying on bitswap for content discovery you are not getting fast content discovery at all and so we should there are things that you're using the broadcast for that are fast that are efficient but using it for the purpose of discovery cuz you didn't feel like advertising an ipni of the dht is not one of them that's just you waited around for 2 minutes and hoped you got lucky and bumbled into the node um, so we want to push, we just want to make things fast. Like that's a separate, like we want to make content routing faster for all these people, which they're not going to get this way. <clears throat> and then we want to take all the things where we are actually using the bit swap stuff and like spamming and limit the spam so that it's the, like the smallest we can, uh, we can afford to do. This is tricky. I was thinking about this last night. There, there's kind of a contention between like, do we as a group focus on improving the like routing of content in, in all forms, or do we focus on guiding that content routing towards the ideal form and reducing reliance on, on potentially the uh, less uh, less exacting forms or the less efficient, less fast forms. Um, I think maybe that's the push and pull that we, we kind of get to wrestle with here. Um, I'm going to leave. So I think there's a good conversation to be had there that we can maybe address more directly. Um, as long as we're kind of thinking about it, um, we may come back to that or, um, potentially do a deep dive on it. I, I think this is a really good point. Um, peer routing optimization. Um, so, <laughs> uh, this, uh, I, I kind of, do, do these overlap? I mean, these overlap, right? The kind of discussion about, um, search delays and peer routing optimization. Um, do, do either a Dean or Will, do you feel like these are two distinct kind of work streams if I try to describe them that way? Uh, or are these kind of the same the same issue that we're talking about here? Um, I describe peer routing optimization as uh, long tail optimization of peer routing functions, which when I, I think about 
um, bit swap search delays and the discussion we just had, I feel like there's a lot of overlap between those two. Maybe I need to click in more. What is what is the the peer routing optimization stuff more explicitly? Like what? I think so. Uh, Turvin, by that I, item, do you mean matching a peer ID to an address, which would be a second lookup in say double hashing or something? Is that what we mean here? These are lookups which bypass IPNI. Uh, oh, sorry, what does that mean, bypass IPNI? Or I guess maybe bypass IPNI is not the, the way to say this. They're, they're lookups that don't go to the IPNI at all, which I think is results in um, bit, swap, um, bit swap lookups. So I, one, I think one meta comment is if we have like a DRI or an owner who for each of these, who can then say what it means, that could be useful in keeping these scoped. Yeah. Um, DRIs is definitely, I'm gonna go for that with the, the next iteration. So I wanna give everybody a chance to kind of volunteer to own one of these. Um, these. These topics I brought up from prior prior kind of conversations that we've been having as we've been like iterating on kind of some of these discussions. So there are potentially work stream items here that I've declared, which uh, overlap a little bit or also uh, are not potentially something we want on our roadmap. So um, let's not take these as grail. Let's take them as something up for um, challenging and potentially removing. Um, but yeah, DRIs. I, I would for for this one. I would suspect this is a mechanism thing, which is the the work stream is is there a way to run something like a Kubo node without a DHT in it? And so we delegate all of the things that we currently get off of the DHT. One of those is pure routing. So then we need to figure out why we have pure routing and what it is that we're actually addressing. Actually, I think. Oh, Sorry. I think there is just reading this again. I think there might be, and, and looking back at previous conversations, I think this might be a mix of two things. One is peer routing, which is to be concise, it's an interface in lip P2P that maps peer ID to address. The other one, the long tail thing, I think relates to a, a case where only a root of a DAG is advertised. And uh, SIDs below the root are, are discoverable through, uh, for example, BitSwap uh, spam uh, and are not discoverable at all through something like IPNI or DHD because that's something that we touched on in the past. So I, I see two distinct things here. I'm not sure which one that draws specifically yeah, the first I, but I, those two are valid. I think this actually sure. needs to be broken up into two items um, because that is, uh, you, you nailed it, Mossy. That's the conversation that I got this idea for this work stream from um, specifically. Um, I, you, you just added enough color for me to kind of refine on uh, this a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in there. Um, okay, so beneath this, um, there's a few items that um, I haven't actually punched up yet, but uh, I have very, very explicit detailed why we're doing these things. Um, some of these are, are mostly like IP and I functions that we're presently working on. So scalability past a single physical node. Uh, I'll add some details there for y'all, but um, the short end of the story is um, we're working on kind of some efforts to make IP and I nodes um, scalable beyond a single instance so that if you were yourself running an IP and I node that uh, potentially you can set up, um, you know, a, a cluster and be able to shard across it without too much challenge. Um, the goal being it makes it much easier to um, run a node. And as your node grows, um, you've got some uh, decomposability with it, but I'll, I'll um, kind of update these. I'll, I'll just give you all kind of a high level review of what these efforts are. 
And um, maybe these work streams need to be collapsed into like just IPNI improvement or or something like that. I'm I'm open to doing that as well. Um, IPNI being able to support results from uh, the DHT, I, I think we're on track for that. I I don't know that um, we need to dig into that one. And then we've got a goal internally of uh, adoption of non-Filecoin index providers. So I think our uh, delegated puts, I think, contribute to, to this um, because that would enable providers to make puts uh, and advertisements via uh, HTTP or I think potentially other methods. I don't know that we've um, talked about that, but I'm guessing that's that's kind of a consideration. <clears throat> and then IPNI reliance on uh, CloudFront. We'd like to kind of minimize um, leveraging CloudFront by looking at uh, caching solutions, but also I think getting multiple implementations of the index publicly available that we're able to synchronize with so that lookups are being made not only of SID.contact. Um, that's how I perceive this effort. Masi, <laughs> did I underprescribe kind of with my title here, like that that larger goal? No, no, I think that that's generally fine. How I organize I mean, these would be- It's not just to- to minimize reliance on CloudFront, right? Like the goal is decentralization exactly. and, and reduction of trust in us. Uh, not having to pay CloudFront is a nice bonus. The, so there is, there is a link here, which is IPNI decentralization federation, whatever you want to call it, which puts, which knocks out, I think three of the items here. Uh, so I would put that as a single epic. That makes more sense. To, to, add, to, to add to to Will's point, I I think like I see this generally like if you use the word decentralization to the to the wrong person, uh, then they start being like, oh, I don't know, you're just trying to like optimize for like some like some like corner case censorship thing. It, however it is that you need to get it to the people, whether it's reducing the costs or reducing the number of times that Massey gets beeped on a weekend or whether it, whatever, whichever one of those, or whether it's reducing the cost for the storage side or the cloud front side, whichever one of those it is, it's part of what happens by spreading the load for multiple people with having redundancy, which is what we're trying to do. Um, <laughs> so we can break those up into ta into different categories if that makes like makes it easier to justify upstream. Um, uh, I I think it's it's okay. I can come up with I can come up with a lot on that subject. I think for me, it's this the exercise and really like the way that we'll benefit from this. It's eight thirty, and we need to um, drop. But uh, the final parting note that I'll leave with this is. Um, the benefit of this exercise is to ensure that we all feel strongly about the why we're attempting to accomplish certain things. Um, I'll ask everyone, just take a look at this. Um, I'll finish kind of adding these notes from today's conversation, and then we'll um, we'll take another look, hopefully more briefly, uh, next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers. Bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>